Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve minimum number of flips to make the binary string alternating. So this is a problem from today's leak code contest and I'm going to show you the big O of n squared time complexity solution and then I'm going to show you how you can take that solution, eliminate the repeated work and get a sliding window linear time solution. And it's a pretty clever solution, at least there's some clever ways to code it up. So we're given a binary string and we're allowed to make two operations on it. Let's see our string look something like this. We're allowed to either take each value such as this first one and flip it to a zero. That's the type two operation we're allowed to do. That's pretty simple, right? We can just take any of these and then flip them to the opposite value, right? Zero to a one or one to a zero. And there's another operation we can also do, which is basically take an element from the beginning and move it to the end. So if we did that, then we would get a new string that looks like this. And we can do that operation as many times as we want. If we do it again, we'll get something like 0, 0, 1, 1. Right, so we can do it as many times as we want. And notice if we do it two consecutive times in a row, if we take both of the characters and move them to the end, we're, you know, that's basically what we're doing. If we do the operation twice, we're basically taking a prefix from the string of size two and moving it to the end. So really there's only n times, if we, if we do that operation n total times, we'll end up with the exact same string, right? If we just take all of these values, move them to the end, we'll get that exact same string, right? That makes sense so far. So in reality, this remove operation is basically allowing us to take any prefix from the string and move it to the end. The only thing we want to return is the minimum number of type 2 operations that it would take for us to take the input string and make it alternating. So for example, these two strings are alternating, right? One, 0, 1, 0, basically every value is the opposite. So 1, 0, 1, 0, etc., right? This one's obviously not alternating, it has two consecutive zeros. So basically, we just want the minimum number of type two operations. So a type one operation is free for us, right? So in this example, we're given a input string of size six. So the first question you might have is how can you even determine the number of operations it would take to make a string alternating? Well, the, there's a lot of ways you might try, and I'll tell you right now, the easiest way is just think about it in terms of this. This string is size six. There's only two strings of size six that are alternating. Either it's gonna start with a zero, in which case this is what the alternating string of size six would look like, or it's gonna start with a one, in which case this is what it would look like. So that's, so basically we're gonna compare a string S to either of these, right? See, what's the number of differences? So for example, if we wanted to know how many operations would it take to make this string equal to this one, we would just count the number of differences. So here you can see this is a difference, this is a difference, and that's it. So it would take two operations for this to become like that. Well, how many operations would it take for this to become like this one? It would take one operation, two operations, three operations, and four four operations, right? So clearly it'll take less changes for us to take this one and turn it into that one. It'll take two rather than four. But what I showed you so far is if we, if we directly take this string S and just try to make it flip as many, the minimum number of times, but we haven't even tried using a type one operation. Let me show you now what the brute force would be if we did use a type one operation. That's the n squared solution that I'm going to show you the repeated work we can eliminate. So as I previously mentioned, for us to take this entire string and count how many operations, what's the minimum number of flips it would take for us to turn it into either of these target strings, right? These are our target strings because these two strings are alternating. So we can compute the minimum number of operations flips it would take to do that in O of n time, right? But we also know this, we are allowed to take any prefix from this string, move it to the end, in which case we would get, you know, this, we'd have that one and move it to the end. So this is going to be the new string. And then for that same, for this new string now, we want to do that same operation. Now check what's the minimum number of flips it would take to turn into one of these two target strings. And once again, that's also going to be a big O of N operation. 
And not only that, but clearly we can try that for every single prefix in the string, move it to the end, one, one, and then try that same thing again and again and again. So let's say we did a prefix of one and we shifted it to the end, right? And of course we could do that for every single prefix. So now if we're, if we're doing it like this, we're going to do the exact same thing that I mentioned. We're going to check, okay, this first character, does it match with this one? And do that for every single character. And basically we're counting the number of differences, right? Or in other words, the number of flips it would take for us to match this target string. Of course, what I just drawed, we could do the exact same on the bottom target string as well. And of course, we're going to try to find the minimum of those two difference counts. Now, my question to you is, have you noticed the repeated work that we're doing? Notice how in the first go around, we were taking these six and then comparing it to the first target string and to the second start target string, right? Each value was being compared just like this. And now we're doing the exact same thing, just we changed the, the string by one. So when you look at these five and we're counting the number of differences, either from this alternating string or from this alternating string, the number of differences, the minimum number of differences from this one will actually be the exact same. So why should we have to run through these five elements again when really we just want to know what's the new minimum number of differences for this portion of the string? And if we can eliminate this repeated work, well then we'll actually only have an O of one operation every time we add a new prefix. And this is the part where we're going to do a little bit of cleverness to make the code a lot easier for us. Wouldn't it be easier if this string that we're comparing to these two target strings, if they actually lined up nicely, like if we could just take this and then compare it here? Well, we can do that because we can just take these two alternating target strings and just extend them as much as we need to, right? So we can take this, add some more alternating characters, and do the same thing with the other alternating target string. So let's just quickly count for, th for this original, the first six elements, how many differences were there with, th with this alternating string? Well, here's one difference, here's a second difference, here's a third difference, and here's a fourth difference. So initially there were four differences with the, the alternating string that starts at zero. How many differences with the alternating string that starts at one? Well, here there's a difference and here there's a difference and in no other places are there differences. So initially there were two differences. So notice how now as we add this character, we're doing the same thing for these six elements. But clearly if we're counting the number of differences from these five elements with these five elements, they stay the exact same, except notice how now we're no longer looking at the first element, right? Was there a difference here? Yes, there was a difference here. So as we removed that character, we basically took the number of differences and decremented it by one, right? So now the differences are actually three. But as you can see over here, when we added this element, we also added one more difference because these two values are difference. So actually the number of differences is going to stay at four even with this new string. And of course we would do that exact same thing with the bottom alternating string as well, right? We would see, okay, over here, we don't have to decrement the number of differences because there was no difference here initially. And over here, as the character that we added, you can see again, we didn't add any more differences either. So the number of differences here is also going to stay constant at two. And at this point, you can probably see we're just going to be continuing that exact same thing, right? So now we would take another character from the beginning, move it at the end. It's a one again. So next, these six elements would be our string. So instead of having to manually do this, manually take every single portion of the string and add it to the end, a clever way to do this that I actually did not come up with, I saw it on the leak code discuss section, is once again, just do what we kind of did down here, right? We just extended these two alternating strings. Let's do the same thing up here, but instead just take the entire string, add it to the end, right? So this is one, 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 zero, zero, zero. We'll take one, 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 these three ones, zero, zero, zero. And now as we go through windows of length six, right? This is one window, this is one window, this is one window etc etc every window is basically going to be 
a portion of the string and the other portion of the string, which was the prefix moved to the end, right? So as long as our window is size six, we're basically taking a prefix that was originally at the beginning and moving it to the end. And we'll do that all the way until we get to the last sliding window of length six. And as you can see, this sliding window is just the exact same as the original string itself. And even these two target strings are the exact same as the target strings from the beginning. So that's the main idea. Once you can kind of see how this, this repeated work is eliminated, coding the solution itself is not that bad. I will admit though, it's pretty hard to come up with this idea of adding the string to itself. Since we're doing a sliding window, this problem is going to be big O of n complexity. So now let's actually code it up. So first thing I'm going to do is just get the original length of this string because that's the, what the size of our window is going to be. Then of course I am going to just take it and add it to itself as I mentioned previously. And we're also going to want two alternating strings which are basically our target strings, right? So we know that the two types of alternating strings could either be one that's starting with zero or one that's starting with one. And we want both of these target strings to be the same length as this new S string that we built basically twice the length of the original S string. So a way to get these values to alternate is basically we can add zero to one of them if I is an even number. If it's odd, then we'll just add a one. So th this will make sure that it alternates at every iteration of the loop. And for the second alternating string, we're basically gonna do the opposite over here. We want that one to start with a one. So I'm gonna initialize a result, basically just gonna give it a default value of the length of S, or you could just do float infinity. Because remember, we want this to start out as a big number because ultimately we're trying to minimize the number of flips. I'll be keeping track of two variables, diff1 and diff2, as I showed in the drawing, basically the number of differences or the number of flips it would take for us to take S and make it the same as alternating 1, that's diff1, and alternating 2, which is diff2. Since this is a sliding window, I'm going to keep track of a left pointer, and the right pointer is going to be iterating through every single position in the length of S. And for every single character we encounter, like basically at position R, if it's different than alternating one, remember we're ultimately just counting the number of differences. So if it's different than alternating one at position R, then we're gonna be incrementing the diff one count, right? We encountered a new character that has a difference and we're just gonna do the exact same thing with the alternating string two. Alt two, if it's a difference, then we increment diff two count. Now, if the size of our window is too big, of course, right, if it's greater than six, which was in the example, but if it's greater than n, which was our original size, then we're gonna wanna decrement the left pointer, right? So let's get the size of the window by right minus left plus one. If that's greater than n, then we have to decrement left, right? We have to take left, or not decrement it, we have to take left and shift it over to the right by one, which is basically incrementing it. But before we increment it, we wanna make sure to update our diff1 and diff2 counts. So if there was originally a difference in our string at position left between alternating one at position left, so if there was a difference between these two, now there's no longer going to be a difference, right? So basically what we can say is we're gonna decrement diff1 count by one, and we're gonna do the exact same thing for the second alternating string. So just copy paste, just update the variables. So after this, our window should not be too large and the diff counts should be updated. So, and we're, we're potentially going to be updating our result, right? But we only want to be updating the result if our window right minus left plus one, the size of our window is exactly equal to N because initially, remember we start out with left and right at index zero. So it's going to be too small of a window. We want to make sure it's exactly N. If it is, that's when we can actually update our result and we want to minimize our result. So we're going to take the minimum of itself diff one and diff two. So as you can see, this is basically, you know, the, the idea is pretty much a brute force solution, but we are eliminating that repeated work by using the sliding window technique. And that being said, after all that, we can just go ahead and return our result. I forgot to, at this beginning, we're not setting alt one and alt two to a single character. We're adding a character each time. We're adding a zero or adding a one, depending on whether it's odd or even, right? We want those to be alternating. So really sorry about that bug. 
Hopefully you caught it by yourself so I didn't trip you up too much. But as you can see, this solution does work. It's pretty efficient. It is a linear time solution. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.